All right, welcome back to Cricket for Americans. Nick here, and I'm bringing you my solo thoughts on the end of the third match between South Africa and India. And I'm sure you know already, I was rooting for India on this match, in this series, and the way the series started with India winning big, I was shouting for everything. I was calling the deepest team in the last 20, all this kind of nonsense. In the second match, it looked like India was going to be able to have a chance to take that one. Fell apart. And not just that, but South Africa outplayed them and deserved that win. That second match, I have my thoughts on that already posted on this channel. In this third match, kind of more of the same. There was a point where I felt like India had a chance to win this match. And they weren't able to get it done. India bats first. They go down for 223. I'm thinking, oh, here we go. They couldn't even last 80 overs. Kohli had 79. Pujara had 43. And the rest of the team had 101. Okay, maybe it's it's a low-scoring wicket. Let's see. Then you have South Africa's first innings in this third match. They go down for 210. All right, it is a low-scoring wicket. They had contributions from Maharaj, Peterson, Dustin, Bavuma, and then everyone else was kind of just there. Peterson gives you the 72. Once again, a lot of guys doing it. Uh, a, little, a few guys doing it, a lot of guys not doing it. And I thought, okay, India's got this. And then India goes down for 198. Amazing bowling by the South Africans once again. Marco Jansen, he hasn't been playing a lot of test matches in his career, but he's got himself a forfer in this second innings. Rabada, we know who Rabada is, gets him three wickets. And then Ngidi, I didn't realize how young Ngidi is. And that's kind of the message of this test squad for South Africa, the age. Ngidi's only 25 years old. I've seen him in the IPL the last two years. I assumed he'd been playing for a lot longer. Very, very young guy. Once again, he thrives here in South Africa, specifically at Cape Town with an economy rate of 1.5. Ngidi, all of the, the talk that we've been speaking about him and his economy rate and getting blasted in the IPL, he gave up. Like, almost a third of the runs in this match in 14 overs in test than he did in that debacle for CSK against Mumbai. Think about that. That's insane. Completely different when he's at home playing test. And I'm really, really proud of the guy. He only has 13 matches in his belt, counting the three that he just played against India. And, you know, he's really, really doing well. He's starting to come back, come into his own, it seems, especially in South Africa. They really got themselves a gym in home grounds. But 198, Pont gets you 100. Kohli gets you 29. All right, but Pont gives you 100. Everyone else combined gives you 98. There's no sense of a tail end for India. Once again, I've been saying it for over a year now, this tail end. Really, really scares me because you can't count on them for any more than 40 runs. And today's match, or not today's match, this third match, you're talking about telling and giving you 14 runs. 14 runs in the second innings. And then South Africa comes in. I'm thinking, okay, India's got like a lead of what, like 200 or something like that? 210, 220. They can do that. This is a low-scoring wicket, everyone. It's a low-scoring wicket. Just in case you didn't know, it's a low-scoring wicket. Uh, no one told South Africa that. Specifically, Keegan Peterson once again, and basically everyone that bad. They only need five batters to be able to get the 212 to chase India, and they get the win. They get the series win. Good things happen for them at Cape Town, and they were able to bounce back after that uh, first loss in the test side. And I have not seen a lot of South Africa immediately, especially the test side. Very, very impressed here. Markram, you know, we've seen him in other formats. He is what he is. Only got 16, but he only saw 22 balls before he got caught. Elger, the captain, this guy, we'll talk about him a little bit later, really showed a lot. He was only able to score 30 runs. But Peterson has a beautiful last night name, even though he spells it wrong. That's okay. I won't blame him for that. Gets 82 after what he gets 72 in his first innings. So, I mean, this is only his fifth test match. Let that soak in for a second. His fifth test match the kid's like 28 years old coming into his own and he not only was the player of this match he was a player of the series five test match total under his belt unless crick buzz is a little late on their stats 82 and 72 and then you got dustin and bavuma 41 32 it wasn't they, they could have they probably could have scored about three 350 i would think if they had the full innings to go if they weren't chasing but in an area that was a low-scoring wicket, 
not so much for them. And that is what I think is the most impressive talking about Elgar as the captain. We just had the news about Cole yesterday. Gabe and I had some thoughts about that, about captaincy and his uh, stint. Go ahead and check out that video if you have not done so yet. But a captain, in my opinion, in my American perspective, a captain needs to ready the ship. A captain needs to hold the line. A captain needs to be that anchor emotionally, field placement, bowling strategies, bowling order, all of that kind of stuff. The captain needs to be there. But you can't take away the idea of the emotional and inspirational support that a captain needs to provide when things aren't going too well. And I liked his comments afterwards where he said, I'm going to let this sink in a little bit because it hasn't sunk in yet. Maybe it will. But we were against it. We were against it. We were against it. And we kept pushing forward. That right there, if I'm building a cricket squad for my nation, for my local county team, that's what I want in a captain. What are you going to do when the pressure is on? South Africa rose when the pressure was on. India shied away. And it's interesting. I've seen all these little stats about Kohli um, retiring the, the, the captaincy about how before Kohli was the captain, a lot of India fans expected not to win on the road. I mean, it was just a foregone conclusion. Kohli has the most wins on the road than um, previous predecessors, and I think than anyone that's close. He has the most wins on the road. And so as an India fan of the last two years, I've come to expect it. So for me, I find that this loss, this series loss, is um, a bad thing for India. I feel like it's something that they shouldn't have had happen. But that's the kind of stuff that Kohli and the Indian squad the last few years have gotten us used to, is them being able to pull out these wins in places that are very difficult to win. Going into this series, Indy had not won a series. And don't worry, South Africa fans. What's up, sup? That's, that record's not going to go anywhere. They still have not won a series in South Africa. It's not easy to win, especially when you have a squad that has a captain that's extremely tenacious and very talented with the bat. You got bowling attack. They even have Norkia for crying out loud. They bring up this Jansen kid um, who's only played a few matches. They have Ngidi in there who's had now 13 matches. They have, I know I'm missing someone, Olivia. I'm not even sure how to say his name, but they got him in there and obviously Rabada. And then Maharaj is going to give you a few overs here and there. Their bowling attack is very, very impressive. But what, what helped them win this match besides that bowling attack? Because you know that bowling attack is out there for those pitches are going to be tough. It was their batting, their security, their anchorship in their batting. And I kind of got off track. Their, their tail end in the first inning, South Africa's 25-32, 35 runs. So they didn't get to that 40 mark. And then we didn't need their tail end in the second innings because they were able to chase. This was what I feel was heartbreaking for India fans because it looked like they had a chance to win each match and they were able to win just one and it was this huge celebration. It was very exciting and then it was short-lived because South Africa, when their backs were against the wall, when everyone was saying, and I heard it in the comment section, oh, but this is a bad South Africa team. This is a young team. Look at the cock. He's retired, but he's also, you know, he's on paternity leave. Look at what happened here. Who's going to be your captain? There's no Foff. I mean, he hasn't probably played for a year or two, but still. What are we going to do? Everyone was kind of slamming South Africa, saying they weren't good enough. And they showed that they're definitely good enough. They showed, you're not going to take the series in our house. We don't care what you think about our team because we have a captain who's not going to quit, who's going to push us. We have young stars. And that's the thing about the South Africa team. If you're a South Africa fan, comment below. Let me know. Are you excited for this Indian squad? Or this Indian squad? For your South African squad for test? You've got to be. Look at the age of these guys. Look at the youth. You have a ton of young guys that you threw out to the fire to see what they can do. Elgar, he's the elder statement, statesman at 34. Markram, we've seen him a lot, but he's not that old. He's in his 20s for crying out loud. Uh, Maharaj is another one of the elder statesmen. But Peterson, Dussin, um, Varian, Jansen, Olivier, I mean, um, Jan, yeah, here's said Jansen, Ngidi, I don't even check Olivier's age for crying out loud, he's 29, um, only 12 matches. You got a lot of young guys who show themselves against one of the best test squads in the world, some would argue the best, India fans, and you're able to hold your own. This is a big series win for South Africa. I don't care about the series record. This is an Indian team that has shown they can go into anyone's house, England, Australia, other places, and take series, and you didn't allow it to happen. Not on your watch. Good on you. 
I love what Elgar brought as far as the captain, as far as leading with the bat in this series. Maybe not so much in this match, but in this series. I loved um, the compliment. You got to love the comp compliment, uh, compliment of Markram, even though in this match he didn't perform that highly either because this guy is a dangerous batter. And he's got some leadership himself, even though he's not the captain. But you had other guys. Bavuma, same type of thing as, as Markram. But when you have Rabada, you have Ngidi, you have Jansen, you have Olivier without a Norkia, able to stifle the Indian batting, that's super impressive. Someone else shared with me on, uh, I think it was a, a comment for our Coley video, that this was the first and ever test match, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe in South Africa. May, I don't know what the stipulation is, where every wicket got was caught. Every wicket was caught for crying out loud. No bowl out, no LBWs, no run outs. Everything was caught. That's pretty impressive. That's kind of freaky and rare in its own, and that's pretty cool. But South Africa, they showed a lot. They definitely weathered that storm of India coming in. We want to get, we want to compete with the WTC. This is, you know, we got the some of the big boys coming in first off and all that kind of stuff, and they were able to handle business at home. And I would imagine it would give them a whole lot of confidence moving forward, especially when they got to travel other places, when they were able to come, welcome India in and take them on, and they were able to move forward there. And now we got the uh, the limited format series starting. We got the ODI, we got the T20. Excited to see that. But if you know me, I'm a huge, I'm a bigger fan of Test than any other series, any other format. And for me, this was a huge series. India, I felt definitely missed the boat. You had the whole tantrum. I feel like it's been talked about a lot, so I'm not going to get too much into it. But you had the whole tantrum by Cole. You had the whole mic stump. For me personally, my perspective, it's not a big deal because I see it almost every day in American sports. It's not too uncommon. But I understand here in cricket, it, it's a big deal. And a lot of people are upset about it. A lot of people aren't happy about it. A lot of people are attributing that being one of the main reasons he retired from the captaincy without saying that was one of the reasons. To me... Again, from my perspective, that's insane. That a tantrum would cause him so much um, disgrace for his nation and his team that he would have to relinquish the captaincy. But as cricket fans, you're thinking like, what are you talking about? Of course it's not. But from my perspective, it's a little insane. It's a little extreme. But a lot of people are talking about that. There was a lot to do with DRS. Okay, And DRS is one of those things that frustrates everyone. I don't care whose side you're on in this series, you know DRS has frustrated you because, not that it's there, not that it overturns when you get the call right, get the call right for crying out loud. And Coley himself said the one that he got really upset with later on, he realized, yeah, that was the right call. But when the DRS shows that it's not the right call and they still stick with their bad call or vice versa, when it doesn't work, it's so aggravating. And I feel like uh, someone had told him, maybe Gabe, that in, in one of these matches or one of these innings or something, DRS had a part to play in almost every single wicket. I don't know about that, but that's insane. When you're doing the margin of error and you're using DRS and it doesn't give you the right outcome, then th that's interesting to me and that's unfortunate. But South Africa, huge win right here. You're in a lot of my respect as a cricket fan. Um... Because I, I didn't have a lot of confidence. I didn't think that they were going to win a match in this series. I never called for the whitewash. But I just don't know the team the, the team that well. South Africa fans, you're signing a little bit. Oh, another reason to hate you, Nick. Sorry about that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But that is those are my honest thoughts about this match. Um, Pont, I was so happy that he was able to show up and get his 100 after I was calling for him to show up some more after the second match. But no one else performed. I talked about the South Africa. Let me talk a little bit about the Indian squad. It was it was unfortunate. KL Raul, he should still be the opening batsman, but you got to do better than 12 and 10. I don't care where you're at. You got to do better. Agarwal, he's a replacement opener. 15 and 7. 15 and 7. 12 and 10. You're talking about an opening partnership that averages like 22. Combined. That's just, that's not going to get the job done. That's not going to get the job done whatsoever. And talking about opening partnership getting the job done, you had um, Markram go down early in that second innings, 22 balls. But Elgar, who did not score a lot of runs, he saw 96 balls. Him and Peterson were really able to form a partnership there. And then Dustin when he came in as well. India didn't have that. They did not have that. Pujara, 
Look at his numbers. Okay, Pujara, he scored 43-9. and nine. These are the days where we're celebrating him getting a 43-1 and one innings. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And then nine in the second innings. Coley was good, but not good enough in that in that second innings as far as run scored. But did he not see a lot of balls? Did he not do his job by seeing tons and tons of balls and allowing Pont to take that century? And I, I say allowing like he controls everything. But cricket fans know what I'm talking about. He did not worry about getting the runs. He was worrying about surviving and running between the stumps to allow Pont to, who was scoring big, high strike rate. What else is new for Pont? 72 almost in that second innings. And that's what you got to do. But Rahani, nine balls. Nine balls in that second innings. 12 in the first innings. He's got to go. Rahani's got to go. And then the tail end is just... I know it's a tail end. They're there to bowl. But you got to give me more than 14 runs in that second innings. What'd they get in the first innings? They got 11, 23... 25 runs in the second innings. And we're counting five batters. That's a lot of pressure to put on any squad to say you're six. You better score 95% of the runs because the rest of us, we aren't going to do it. And and we may not always guarantee an amazing performance as well on the bowling side. Okay? On the bowling side in that first innings, you had Boomra five wickets. He was fantastic. Umesh got two. High economy rate. Shami got two. And the Kerr, he, he was there, but didn't make too much of an impact after his seven for the other day. And then the second innings, they just were not able. Once again, they were not able to get those big wickets. Those early big wickets. I'm talking about two, three, four batters. Get at least two of those when you have to hold us a low score for them to chase. And you have yourself a chance. Frustrated about Team India and where they're at right now. But I get it. Look at the conditions. Look at where they're at. Look at who they're playing. An amazing bowling attack. And it's a recipe for disaster if you're not locked in and if you're not ready to rock and roll. And if your openers can't last for more than 22 on average in this match. Very frustrating there. Happy for South Africa. Happy for your fans. Comment below. Let me know what you think about this match. Let me know what you think about this test series. And until next time, adios.